Mmm, it's an orange juice. With the World Giant's old stats of a 6.5 tile range, you used to almost always be able to connect to the tower. But with this new range reduction, tower connections are more rare since he has the same range as an Electro Wizard now. When it does connect, you're in for a world of hurt. To connect RG, you need to understand how to use the RG and the differences of when to plant him in the back or when to plant him straight at the bridge. You need to decide this based on what cards and counters your opponent dishes out. When you're looking at the meta decks on Deck Shop, you'll notice a lot of the same cards are paired with the RG. Lightning works incredibly well with the Giant. Buildings don't entirely stop the Royal Giant. They'll usually need a ranged unit like Witch or Musketeer with a building to completely stop the Royal Giant. There's usually lightning in these decks. Furnace or Goblin Hut is another building that works against the Royal Giant. It's a passive building that banks up your total elixir on the map and lets you chip the enemy tower. The Furnace Synergy works really well with the Royal Giant as well. Just because the Giant engages the tower near the bridge with incoming Fire Spirits, they're hard to counter and they have a constant area denial and denies you from placing Swarm Troops on top of that Royal Giant to counter it. Another excellent synergy is having Log or even Zap in the deck to protect his Royal Highness from Swarmies like Skeleton Army or Goblin Gang. That is the bulk of the DPS to take out an RG. So you need to space out all of your units so that they don't get spell value out of this if you want to have any hope of defending against the RG. Especially when there's an Inferno Tower planted right at the river to avoid lightning. The Iwas adds a nice little backup support to destroy the Inferno Tower. Because of this huge buff in damage, he deals 254 damage. So he destroys buildings a lot quicker when he does connect. Against Tombstone, it's almost worthless. He pretty much two shots Tombstone like it's nothing. The skeleton spawns aren't going to reach him in time, especially since the RG always has support units behind him. One of the more reliable buildings that distracts the RG long enough to kill him with support troops are going to be Mortar or Bomb Tower. They have a lot of health. These buildings can tank up to four shots from the Royal Giant, buying your mini P.E.K.K.A. or whatever. More time to slash him away. Of course, the Inferno Tower is going to be one of the best defensive buildings against the tank, but most RG decks have Zap or Lightning, so prepare your body. If you're facing a lot of Royal Giants, you will need to understand the best counters to RG and incorporate it into your deck. A building, a tank killer, an ice wizard, a tornado, any of these four combinations will wreck the Royal Giant. Without any proper counters, a Royal Giant is going to take out your Princess Tower in 10 hits now. The most reliable tank killer has been and always will be the Mini P.E.K.K.A. It costs 4 Elixir, stops the Royal Giant from getting more than 2 hits on the tower, and if you predict it and plant it fast enough, it's only going to get 1 hit on your tower. Lumberjack is like a fast Mini P.E.K.K.A. It's relatively the same DPS and will stop the Royal Giant from getting more than 2 hits on the tower. P.E.K.K.A. is the beefy Mini P.E.K.K.A. But surprisingly, it's not exactly stronger than a Mini P.E.K.K.A. The RG will still get 2 hits on your Prince's Tower. This is a completely different power move because now you've got to commit to counter pushing with a P.E.K.K.A. because it costs more and has more health. Hunter ranks top 4 among these babies. Planted right in front of the RG, all of those bullets will hit the RG dealing just under 700 damage. This stops the RG from getting more than 2 hits on the tower. The next best thing you have is the Prince. He deals a bit less damage since he attacks slower, but he is tankier, so in a sense, he's going to be a bit more dependable on countering the RG. The Gentle Giant will get 3 hits on your tower, but now you've got a nice juicy Prince to counterattack. Any of the tank killers in mind, you've got an amazing synergy to pair with any one of them. The Ice Wizard not only slows the Royal Giant's movement, but also his attack speed by 35%. Normally, he takes out the tower in 10 shots, but with an Ice Wizard alone, he dies after 5 shots to the tower. There are many other tank killers that you can have like a Night Witch. She's kind of scary to put right at the bridge since her damage isn't instantaneous, and any type of support will wreck her bats. But, left alone, this interaction stops the RG from getting more than 3 hits in your tower. Then of course, you have Sparky. This really specific card can stop the Royal Giant just as well as the Night Witch. He'll get 
three hits on the tower, which can be quite a bit. But it's even scarier if they have Zap, or worse, an Electro Wizard behind that Roll Giant. Family of Electricity, if you can line up the Zappies just right, you can manage to perma-stun him and prevent him from getting more than three hits on your tower. Zappies tech. Three Musketeers aren't really tank killers, and if they have Fireball, Poison, Rocket, whatever, you are doomed. <laughs> but if you do have nine Elixir to spare and you're in a pinch, that Roll Giant will not get more than one hit on your tower. Barbarians aren't very common in higher arenas because it seems everyone has spells or splash units, but they're still quite effective. RG is only going to get two hits on your tower. If you use E-Barbs, that's actually not bad. This surprised me myself just because that Royal Giant's only going to get two shots on the tower. It's the distance that the Royal Giant has to walk and just how fast the E-Barbs are. Minion Horde is a high risk counter. If you know they have absolutely no counters to your Minion Horde, it's decent at preventing more than two hits. And now you can counterattack with a Minion Horde. Goblin Gang does the same thing, but there will always be support troops behind an RG. But just for reference, the Goblin Gang, left ignored, can stop the Royal Giant from getting more than two hits on the tower. Skarmy is the juiciest swarm counter to the Royal GG, but here's the thing. Anything, a gust of wind, a snowball, a log, a zap, a tornado, bats behind the Royal Giant, a fart, anything is going to stop the Royal Giant. This is incredibly unreliable, but it does stop him completely if they have no counters. Cannon Cart isn't exactly the best tank killer, but it is a really good card to counter push with. Realistically, you'll want to plant the Cannon Cart to take out the RG and a tank in front of it just so that it can absorb or protect the Cannon Cart. Now you're up Elixir and can counter push. Pair any of these tank killers with an Ice Wizard, a building, or even a tornado, or even better, have all four types of counters in your deck. Tornado does an amazing job because of his five tile range now. Slap any tank killer on the map like a prince, pull back the RG with tornado, and this pretty much shuts down most RG decks, especially if it's their primary win condition. The reason spawners are so good against the RG is because they're passive buildings. So you plant down a building, you bank some elixir in the map. Now that RG has to penetrate through that hut, Ice Wizard or any tank killer paired with a hut and there's no way that Royal Giant is getting through. So what if he's already connected but you have a building in rotation? You can push back the Royal Giant with any buildings. Passive buildings like any spawners or elixir collectors will push the Royal Giant out of range and force him to retarget. Defensive buildings have a slightly slimmer hitbox, but it still works. You'll be able to successfully block the Royal Giant from smacking the tower. Tesla is the thinnest building, and this still works at pushing the Royal Giant away from the Prince's Tower. The optimal placement for center planted RG is on the inner tile, so based on that placement, you can absolutely plant a Tesla to thrust the Royal Giant out of range of your Prince's Tower. It's especially effective when you push with a tombstone, just because of all those skeletons that spawn. It forces your opponent to zap the skeletons, which baits out the zap, lets you play whatever like Goblin Gang or anything else. Even if he's locked onto your tower, no problem, push him back and you're golden. This buys you time to properly counter him with some tank killers or other support troops. Any tank killer like Mini P.E.K.K.A paired with either the Log or even a 1 Elixir Ice Spirit is enough to stop the Royal Giant from getting more than one shot off your tower. This may very well be worth it since the Royal Giant deals more damage than a Fireball each hit. Just throw everything you have. Any small units like Skeletons will make a huge difference too. Electro Wizard plus Skeletons, one hit on your tower. That's it. Ice Wizard and Skeletons? The Ice Wizard deals almost no damage, but that slow is so juicy. Roll Giant is only going to get two hits on your tower. Of course, there will always be support troops behind the Roll Giant. These are all of the examples to give you better perspective. If you use Executioner and Tornado, that Roll Giant's going to get three hits on your tower, but at least you're able to eliminate every single support troop behind the Roll Giant, and you're up an Executioner now. One deck I'm starting to see surface quite a bit more frequently in 12 win grand challenges are bowler decks. 
This is rather interesting because Bowler is an anti-anti meta killer. It handles all the royal giant tank killers like Mini Pekka, Lumberjack, and the Hunter. So Bowler actually synergizes well with the royal giants. To summarize how to counter the royal giant, bring a tank killer, bring a building, use tornado, use ice wizard, use any of these two combinations, or if you are really scared of royal giant, bring all four.